Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to do a little bit of a tour of some plein air palettes and some tips that I have gathered kind of along the way. Okay, so on the outset I want to let you know I'm not a great plein air painter but I do enjoy it and I do I am kind of always trying to figure out how it can work for me so I have a couple of tips and also um, some videos I'll link below of some other people will talk about and then I'll just go through and show you I have kind of three setups so um, this is like the first one just a pencil tin and then this one is a little bit more extensive it has some watercolors and then some neo colors and um, basically some wet mediums so things that I can use if I have a little bit more time and space and then this one is a new one which is really exciting this is a like a big it's almost like a travel studio so um, this one would be more for like taking on road trips which I may be doing soon so I may I'll you know I'll of course like let you know if I do that but um, yeah so that is what we're gonna dive into today Okay, so this first setup I have, this is tried and true. This really works and I really enjoy this one. This is just very simple. It's a moleskin sketchbook and then just this pencil um, packet. So this is like a Contia Paris. This was 12 pastel pencils and you can see that I've kind of double stacked pencils there to get more in the tin. And so I will just take this little setup uh, if I'm like in a waiting room um, yeah and it works perfectly like I can just pull out a pencil pop that back in my bag and then just have this uh, one notebook on my lap and yeah I, I've really enjoyed this so this kind of come this is just kind of a constant like I put this um, you know book and pencil case in my bag wherever I go so then I just have something that I can just uh, pull out and at a moment's notice and it's it works really really nicely so there's often like that page there was a pattern on the rug um, yeah just different things and then the moleskin as well does take wet mediums which is it sort of gives the paper quite a nice texture as well so um, then I pulled this sketch back, <laughs> sketchbook out just so that I can show you um, the pencil the actual what's in this pencil tin so I've shown this before I think in the um, 2023 like the yearly goals or something like that um, but I just wanted to uh, put it here so it's all in this video and it will just be the uh, pencils that I use in this pencil tin um, and you can see here as well this is a sketchbook I don't show that often on the channel but I do like to pull it out if I just want to um, if I have a few minutes to sketch Lately I've just been kind of going back over some things with uh, gold, the gold Windsor & Newton ink and dip pen as well. So this is a page that I showed in the other video but you can see this, the kind of pencils that I've used there swatched and they're just some of my favourite pencils. I have used them for quite a few years and I really enjoy them. And then I also sometimes take this little supplementary pencil tin and that's just filled with a few extra you know just extras that don't fit in the other one and that kind of changes out um, depending but yeah so that is um, that's something I definitely recommend just even one pencil and a notebook is really useful um, in situations where you have to wait for quite a while and then so this one here is kind of a new one we've been doing a few videos about this setup and I've been really, really enjoying this one. So this has been mostly taken out in the garden and on the patio and just kind of uh, trying it. But you can see I have this little 
um, Whiskey Painters Cup. This is has been really useful and um, yeah, I really enjoy it. So it does come with this lid and I guess it's got like a keychain attached to it so you can kind of clip it onto something. Um, but I just generally leave the lid and I'm just taking the cup part. Um, so I have this tiny Delphonics pouch. It's the extra small, so it's actually quite small. And it just fits these things quite nicely. Um, so I have my uh, Sennelier travel palette, which I have a couple of videos about. I've swatched, I've swapped a lot of the colors out. And then I have the art graph. And then I have the, the whiskey painters, the cup. And then I can, I just put the little pouch in there so I can use that to clean up my brush while I'm painting like to wipe the excess water off and things. And then I can also fit the tin of Neo Colors in there as well. So you can see that this doesn't um, close, like it won't zip up when this, when the Neo Color tin is in there, but I don't mind that. I just want this to kind of sit next to me and I can grab things in and out. So I'm not trying to, um, I'm not worried about things falling out. And it's just a really compact, compact kind of way to take things and, yeah, I, I just prefer that rather than having like a bigger um, pouch. Um, so let's see. So you can see this is kind of the setup when it's all taken out. We have a couple of um, travel brushes as well. These are my favorites. So the gold one is the Escoda Reserva. It's 1214 series and just a beautiful brush. And then the black one is the Da Vinci uh, 1503 series and again just they're both really really lovely brushes so yeah and then you can see with the Neo colors one of my favorite favorite ways to use them has been dipping them in the cup of water and I'll show you this later in the video as well but you get such a beautiful line and you know if you're using a pencil it takes a lot more work to get that kind of amount of um, line and coverage so I really enjoy it for that I really like uh, when it's wet and the um, just how it lays on the paper so yeah so then everything just folds back up and it's very just easily packed away Okay, so let's talk about the sketchbook that I've been using. So the first one was a moleskin, but this one is actually made for watercolor. So it's the handbook sketchbook, I think that's what it's called, and it's the watercolor edition. So it has like the blue, um, like cover, like the little paper on the cover, um, not the red one. And so it's a thicker paper, it's 300 GSM, so it doesn't warp um, when you're using it. And the other thing that I like about this, um, so this is not cotton paper, so, um, you know, you're not going to get the sort of same, like, absorption as the cotton paper, uh, but you get just, it, what it does do is it's... Um, it dries very quickly so you can kind of do what you need to do it also takes all the mediums really well um, so you can you know put a lot on the paper and um, yeah I just I actually like how the watercolors granulate and things like that on this paper as well so yeah I, I have really enjoyed it for that there's also quite a lot of pages in it as well it's it's a little bit thicker than a regular sketchbook which I really like too um, so yeah 
We'll talk about um, these colour swatches in a little bit as well. Um, that is what I've got in the pencil roll. And then we did a video about this kind of the process for these um, pages last the last video so you can kind of see me out and about um, creating those pages uh, and what I'd like to do eventually is do so you can see there that's the, the cover um, I'd like to eventually make some paintings and kind of show you the the full spectrum from the first initial sketches to a painting so Okay, so this is a new pencil roll. So this is more like a um, travel roll uh, or like it's kind of almost like a compact little studio. Uh, so this one is from Primrose Yarn. It's actually, it was actually a needle case. So, and the oiled leather strap is really lovely as well. So um, I actually saw this last year at Rhinebeck so we were in their stall it was actually really hard to get into their stall um there were like a few stalls where there was just people and it was just crazy trying to get in there um this was one of them so but as we were waiting in line they had these just near the um near the cash register and yeah they, it was really beautiful i actually saw the one with they have different like colors so I saw the one with the black exterior and the yellow ochre interior and it was really really lovely so but I settled on this um, this one and you can see because uh, it's made for knitting needles so you've got like you know not that much room there um, I could fit two pencils or one in the front and one in the back which is not ideal so uh, what I did is I took a quick unpick or I think in America they're called seam rippers and I just unpicked a few of these lines of stitching so that I could fit more pencils in there so um, that you can see kind of I left like every second one uh, and then I kind of unpicked the next one so basically all that is is you just kind of pop the little the, the um, sharp part there underneath the thread and then you can just pull that out so it does take a little bit of fiddling it takes a little bit of time um, but it, it, it was so helpful like I really really enjoy um, you know and obviously if you're using it for, as a needle case you know you, you can squeeze the needles in like they're quite small so you don't um, need to do this but I really liked just the size and just everything about this so I wanted to use it for obviously for pencils and for art things so you can see there it's pretty easy I've just pulled those out I'm just trimming off any uh, ends that might may still be there and then I have this really lovely kind of open space there where I can fit all these pencils in and everything that I had hoped and kind of wanted to um, be able to put in there now I can and yeah once it's all done you kind of you don't even notice um, where it was ripped out so yeah you can see there like how many then I can get like four across five across in that big pocket there I've got like six or seven across so and I'm able to fit that that many in the front and the back so I can fit a lot more in there now which is exactly kind of how I imagined using it so yeah I really really love it Okay, and you can see that how I was just um, adding the little bit of pencil work to the front of the um, 
watercolor sketchbook as well so I have I finally kind of finessed how I want the inside of this to go so I will kind of walk you through that and a few different options of things that can go in there as well but firstly we have the Leutsch term so this is the B6 plus it's a soft cover I really like their soft covers and um, makes it very lightweight and not too cumbersome but it's just a, it's also just really yeah just nice I like it uh, and then I have this uh, plein air Pe uh, pe uh, what am I saying watercolor palette so that goes in that can actually go in one of these pockets but these pockets are so deep that that can go in the bottom and um, then you can also fit like the neo colors in there as well so these pockets are quite generous and like you can yeah you can fit quite a lot and it just kind of depends um, how like how you want to stack things so I also have a few just loose watercolor papers in there so if I wanted to uh, do anything on a cotton paper and then I'm also showing you here that this is the art creation sketchbook so that also fits really nicely in one of these pockets then you can have two sketchbooks in there uh, and then there's a third row that I'm not really using but I'm just going to show you you can fit a pencil uh, like a watercolor palette in there or you can also fit the palette in the side pocket with the zip if you wanted to use those back pockets um, for sketchbooks as well so I just have like one pen a couple of pencils I have this ruler so this is a Midori ruler and it um, it's I think it's only about six inches and it's quite wide when it's closed and then you can open it up and it becomes like a, a, a probably about a 12 inch ruler I think it's all in centimeters but yeah it's a really really nice um, it is a little piece of artwork in itself it's really lovely so then I have my favorite Escoda Reserva number six and I really like that you can take like a brush in here and then I just have a couple of the Da Vinci travel brushes so the one with the white writing that's actually a nail brush but yeah I think it's just the same thing so and yeah so I won't go through like and swatch all the pencils but I'll just show you a swatch so you can kind of see those okay so yeah those are probably all swatched out in my top favorite uh, pencils video if some of them aren't there they're probably in the other pencil tin so this is another little little palette kind of thing that I put in the uh, pocket we'll talk about these both of these in the next video so it's going to be about um, so it'll be inspired by one of your comments but it's about uh, creating like creative palettes different ways to create palettes and um, yeah there's a lot of really interesting and nice ways to create palettes so we'll do that and kind of some painting with them and things in the next video um, but this little palette was inspired by these swatches so I can't remember why I did them but yeah I made a little palette just based off that so you can see the size difference here in these like how it kind of increases every time so um, yeah that's just something to consider when you're going somewhere the weight and the size um, and then I wanted to show you this as compared to the superior labor leather pen roll so I have used this one for quite a few years I really really enjoy it you can fit a watercolor palette in there and this is so much when you have like the other one full this is so much more lightweight and compact 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is go back to the beginning, go back to the um, the things that I've been working on in this book, and I'll just show you kind of a little bit of the process of some of these pages. So, so the first thing you're going to see here is not the first thing that I have done in this book. I actually generally start somewhere in the middle or towards the back of a book, and then once I kind of more get a feel for what the book is about. I'll come back in and kind of add a cover page so yeah this, this generally will stay blank for quite a while uh, before I dive in so I don't just dive in and kind of get the first page done I just leave it and kind of let it um, you know happen when I kind of have more of an idea of what the sketchbooks about and yeah so this one is a plein air one so what I wanted to, to do here was kind of a little landscape scene in the kind of a Rococo style frame and so yeah I just show you a little bit of that process and you can see that I've sketched it very um, like I haven't I haven't you know erased lines I haven't kind of created these perfect um, things I'm just I've just left it uh, to, and allowed it to be what this sketchbook is which is a, a plein air um, sketchbook so and this is like a whole different way of sketching and I was really interested this week to see Julia Barmanova so she is one of my favorite lands um, watercolor pa painters and she uh, did a reel about you know the the work that she does in her sketchbook plein air so generally she's like on a sailboat or some amazing thing and um and then versus like work in the studio and so it was just it's really nice to see that difference and then um another video that i watched is um Let's see Christine art I think and I will link it below and she just put out a video about um, ways and differences things to look for when you are out and about sketching you know there's temperature um, to take in consideration there might be wind factors and you know there's a whole lot of different uh, things to consider there and yeah so and then the other thing that I wanted to mention about the pencil roll so I saw that at Rhinebeck and then I was, you know, I, I liked it, but, but when I saw Mel Chadwick's um, The Little Robin that visited her on her pencil roll, then I was like, yep, it's time to get one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really, really inspired by that and really enjoyed that. But, yeah, you can see that I also did a little diptych on the front page there so I put two artworks together in the frame so the tree started you know in the bottom one and then finished in the top one which I really enjoyed as well so this next page is a actually so this is not something that I did on um, location or, or about a location but these were, were some peonies that my mum brought home from New York so um, and I didn't actually sketch it from even looking at the peony. I just was sketching this from memory of the peony. And um, basically, one of the things I have been trying to do is to practice things that I might encounter or things that I might want to paint on location and just getting a little bit of practice in with the materials that I have are for that and also the subjects that I want to paint on location so that I already have a little bit of kind of stored up memory about how to paint them or um, you know when I'm not kind of pressed for time or pressed for just in that kind of intense moment um, that I can kind of draw on this like the memory of some of these um, different things so this next scene, I painted this, um, this is actually when we come out of Whole Foods, they have, or like one of our local Whole Foods, they have um, some umbrellas and kind of a setup for where you can eat. And I always love them. So I painted this page with them open one, and then I painted the next page when they're closed at night or when it's raining. Um, and I forgot to insert, I do have like a little bit of footage of these 
like both scenes but I'll, I'll actually try and put some photos on my blog and I'll leave a link to that but yeah so it's just a really nice like I always love walking past there and kind of seeing that um we never really sit there but yeah it's just a nice um thing to kind of to kind of see there and I've also really been inspired by Sandy's coffee um coffee shop sketches on her sub stack as well so yeah so that is that it looks a little bit like Christmas but um I didn't mean it to so um and then yeah this one is kind of more of an evening scene and like I said like you come out at night and um yeah but I really like the um, practicing I liked practicing the folds in the fabric when their umbrellas are closed up So, uh, yeah, that is kind of the process for these. And this has been really, really helpful in just getting a little bit of that kind of understanding of how to paint some of the things that I am interested in painting out and about. And so you'll be seeing more of this, like, you know, out and, and kind of on location. The other thing is um, even just taking these things and like sketching in your car um yeah so anyway let's see um the other thing so i think the video is sort of wrapping up here 
So I wanted to also let you know, um, I did hope to have a couple of things. So, and you can also see here, um, this is kind of a more of a pencil sketch of the sketch that I did in the last video of one of those and just a little bit more of a study in kind of the branches and foliage and trying to figure out like how to actually express that in like watercolor so it's a little bit different I've been really enjoying um, I will link his video below but he does he's an incredible landscape painter and obviously like he's doing it in oils so some of those things need to be translated to watercolor which is a little bit different so I've been just thinking about that um, and yeah but what was I saying um, yeah so I had hoped to have a couple of announcements this week but um, yeah I'm, I'm a little bit closer to having that done but still this year seems to be going very very quickly and Yes, just trying to get it all done. Um, anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, the this video, and then I'll also show you at the end um, the. Hopefully, you've all gotten or or those sh they should almost be there if you got a painting, and there there's possibly going to be a watercolor shop update. Uh, I was hoping for today, but hope maybe. Um, yeah, the, in the next few weeks there should be uh, a little update. It won't be a large one, but just a small one. So um, that is all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next uh, video. Bye.